This is day VE3OI and this video is about the uh, Kanga Paul Darlington Internet of Things uh, module that I recently picked up from Kanga UK. It's, uh, it is a compatible module with the existing Paul Darlington transmitter receiver shields. It's based on the Arduino Uno footprint and it comes with an ESP8266 uh, microcontroller which uh, has Wi-Fi capabilities and uh, the module uh, also has an AD9834 uh, uh, DDS uh, chip which makes this uh, an ideal experimental uh, platform for radio based projects. So in this video I'll be um, uh, demonstrating a couple of uh, projects of um, I've done using um, the MQTT protocol and the Node Red uh, flow based uh, development uh, environment uh, running on a Raspberry Pi uh, version 1, which is the, the, uh, the very first Raspberry Pi uh, that came out. And I've been looking for use for that uh, old Raspberry Pi because it doesn't have a lot of uh, horsepower, and this is, was a perfect project for it. So on my Raspberry Pi, I'm running two software packages. One is uh, the Mosquito package, which is basically implementing an, an MQTT broker, which allows uh, a MQTT device to talk to the broker, and they exchange MQTT messages. And in this case, the device is the uh, Paul Darlington Kanga uh, module. Also on the Raspberry Pi, I'm running the Node Red uh, application, which is a flow-based uh, development environment, and it allows you to write software based on uh, flows by dropping, um, dragging, and dropping boxes. It's so it's not like a uh, programming language like the uh, Arduino. And a couple of neat features of Node Red: it it has a dashboard, which is a GUI which is accessible from any browser that's running on a tablet, a PC, and a phone. And uh, the dashboard allows you to go in and configure Node-RED or actually use it. So you would set up your flows and your flows would be, would be displayed on the uh, dashboard. Another neat feature of Node-RED is, is the ability it has to send uh, email messages, SMS, uh, Twitter, or any other web messages to a web service. So there are two examples I've got of my uh, setup. One is a, a hot tub monitor. I've got a hot tub here and uh, we are constantly plagued with power outages which sometimes will trip the breaker on my hot, hot tub and in winter I have no way of knowing whether my hot tub is on and off and the water in my hot tub could freeze and uh, damage it. So I've built a monitor which has a, um, a temperature probe connected to the um, Internet of Things uh, device and I'm able to monitor the temperature of my hot tub uh, from Node Red and I'm able to generate an email alert should the temperature uh, drop below a certain threshold. So the second example is a radio front-end mock-up showing how potentially you could control a radio from within Node Red. So in the case the uh, Internet of Things device is part of your radio, like the, the AD9834 would become your oscillator in your radio and you would use Node Red to control that oscillator and uh, do that completely from a, uh, a GUI front end. Whereas if you had to do that from the um, microcontroller itself, like the SP8266, you would need to attach an LCD or you would need to do a ton of programming here. So all that programming is now offloaded into Node Red, and the sketch that you're running on your ESP8286 is much, much smaller, and it's basically taking the Node Red commands and implementing them on the uh, uh, module here.
Here's a setup I'll be using to demonstrate uh, both of my projects. Uh, at the heart of it is the uh, shield here, the uh, uh, Kanga Paul, Paul Darlington uh, Internet of Things shield. I've got my Raspberry Pi here, which is running uh, Mosquito and uh, Node Red, and my uh, Raspberry Pi is connected to my uh, Wi Fi router here, and the uh, Kanga Shield is also connected via wireless to the uh, Wi Fi router. I've also got for uh, testing the temperature uh, controller is I've got a can of uh, hot water uh, which is going to simulate my hot tub and a can of cold water which is going to simulate my hot tub which has been shut off for you know several hours and the water is getting close to freezing. Here's a close-up of the Internet of Things uh, shield from Kanga. Uh, you can see it's in the Arduino Uno footprint. It's got the ESP8266 uh, module here. Uh, the uh, analog devices DDS is uh, the chip is right there and uh, this is connected to my PC via a USB uh, connector and that's right now only supplying power uh, to the unit as well I use that for uh, downloading my Arduino sketch to the unit and it's run and right now I've got my scope here I've got my scope probe here uh, connected to the output of the uh, the analog devices DDS and I have got my analog pin here connected to my temperature sensor and uh, my temperature sensor is right here it's right at the tip here and I've got it waterproofed it's uh, and this is just a shielded cable going back uh, to a, a small little interface I made so it's got uh, an ADC pickup here and it's supplying uh, ground and 3.3 uh, .3 volts. So this is my Raspberry Pi and it's uh, it's got a power USB connector here for power and it's got an Ethernet connector here that's going to my Wi-Fi router. So here's a tour of the software I'll be using for my uh, demonstration. Uh, at the heart of this is the um, sketch which is loaded on the ESP8266 uh, that's going to implement uh, uh, MQTT and it's a, it's a relatively small sketch uh, there's not a lot of a uh, ton of programming here and uh, this is very well documented on uh, the internet I won't be going through how you actually you know set up MQTT but there's a there's a ton of videos and it's uh, very straightforward how to do it. From the node red perspective here's the the main interface into the configuration of node red and again it's a flow based uh, programming language um, and basically all you're doing is that you're dragging various nodes and you're connecting the nodes up to other nodes at, to do various functions and uh, here I've got one set of flows for my temperature monitor and here I've got another set of flows for my mock radio controller here so now if I go over to the uh, dashboard so all those flows now are actually generating this display here and uh, I've got two displays one is for my radio console so this is how uh, the, the mock set up for a radio I've got like an S meter set up I've got the status of the radio whether it's on or off the frequency it's set to the mode uh, you could select which band you're on you can uh, increment or decrement the frequency you could select which mode you could this is your push to talk and you could send um, a message for example for a beacon then on the temperature controller a similar sort of thing is that you've got some controls here to enable uh, various uh, parts of, uh, of uh, the, the monitoring you could set your threshold temperatures here and this is actually telling you what uh, the current temperature and it's actually got a chart of and it'll be tracking the temperature over time 
Uh, this here is kind of neat. This is a set of flows that which track the performance of the Raspberry Pi. So right here, this is giving us the processor utilization, the memory utilization, and the uh, disk usage. So I'm going to demonstrate the temperature controller. It's very uh, straightforward. Um, uh, first thing you do, you would turn the master switch on, and so that uh, starts communication with the Raspberry Pi. And you can see the status here, it's saying it's on. So now I'll turn on the monitor enabled. So now it's starting to monitor the temperature, and my temperature probe is actually just sitting outside. It's measuring room temperature. Here you can see the probe is just sitting. I'm just going to put it into the hot water now. And you should, you should see the temperature rocket up to about 100 degrees. So that's what uh, the temperature of the hot water is right now. So uh, right now I have voice alerts disabled. So the, um, the system would generate uh, voice alerts. It would do an a, a announcement of uh, when the temperatures reach a, a critical level. And I can enable alerts. So if I enable alerts, it comes back and says its status is normal because my warning threshold is 70 degrees and the temperature is 105 degrees so it's over the warning and it's over the critical temperature which is 50 degrees so uh, everything is fine so I'm going to turn on voice alerts so right now it's set to monitor and it's also um, when it uh, gets below the warning uh, temperature an email gets sent to my email address and uh, same thing with the critical alerts and once it once it gets below the critical temperature the voice will come on and announce a critical uh, level so I'm not going to get the temperature to go below the warning threshold So there, so there's my first alert, it's coming back and it's telling me that my low temperature uh, uh, threshold has been reached and uh, there would be an email uh, uh, coming out being sent to my uh, email uh, my account. So I'm now going to put it to go down to the critical level. So once it gets below 50, it'll start announcing uh, the critical level. So right now it hasn't gone down below 50 yet. So let's give it a second. If not, I could just raise this temperature to critical alert temperature to 60. So there, uh, and there's my critical alert now that's coming out it's saying critical Great. temperature critical and you hear the voice there coming back and saying it's critical and again a, an email yeah. alert will be going out now with all this the interesting thing with all this monitoring going on the Raspberry Pi processor utilization has only gone up a small amount and memory has only yeah. gone up a small amount so this is not taxing the Raspberry Pi at all. I'm going to go ahead and just disable this stuff here. But the uh, the processor utilization did not uh, uh, drastically increase. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but uh, here's my email account and you can see the uh, the email alerts there. You'll see a critical alert and you'll see a, a temperature warning alert for both types of alerts there. So once again, the idea behind this project is that this would get deploy, uh, deployed at my hot tub and it would be monitoring my hot tub and if the temperature of my hot tub goes below 70 degrees, I would get a warning alert and uh, if the temperature drops below 60 or 50 degrees, I would get a critical alert and uh, the reason I'm doing this is where I live 
uh, the power is notoriously bad. We're always getting brownouts and uh, occasionally the breaker for my hot tub will trip and uh, there will be no power going to my hot tub and in the winter uh, you know uh, if my hot tub's off for a lengthy period of time it would freeze and uh, it would get damaged. This is a demo of the mock radio controller I created. This is not an actual radio uh, controller. I'm not actually controlling a radio but I'm just sort of showing how you could potentially control a radio using this. So uh, I've got uh, one panel here which are controls and another panel here which are, are measurements. So there's a master switch. I could select the band. I can increment the frequency and I can set whether it's uh, I'm going to increment or decrement the frequency. I can select a mode, for example, if it's uh, CW, PSK, and I'm assuming this will be used for a digital mode. Um, you can have a push to talk. You could so you could go into you know transmit receive mode, and you can have a message which you could transmit. For example, this could be a beacon, and you would put a message here that you would uh, transmit out using one of these modes and on the measurement it's showing you the status this is telling you what uh, the last MQ MQTT command it got received back from the uh, ESP8266 uh, the current frequency it's set to the mode and it's simulating an S meter here so you've got an analog uh, port on the uh, 8266 which you could uh, connect up and uh, 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 monitor the uh, signal level. So I've got an S meter chart here which is showing the S level uh, over time. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the master on and uh, right now the last command it got back was a set com set mode and then it's uh, saying it's uh, it's in receive mode and it's sending uh, S commands and it's uh, in CW mode. That's the frequency it's set to right now. And the S meter, again, I'm just simulating this. The uh, the 8266 is just 8266 is just sending back, uh, you know, random numbers uh, just to sim simulate uh, some noise on the band. So I can go ahead here and I can say like it's right now the 40 meter band. So if I go to the 180 meter band. Uh, that's the so it's saying it's at uh, 1.8 megahertz and I can uh, increment the frequency by 10 Hertz or by a hundred or by a thousand and if I go I can similarly decrement it by 10 by a hundred or by a thousand and uh, I can set it for example in uh, ready mode so you'll see it, it's in set mode and now it's set to ready and uh, or for example JT65 and again this is not actually talking to a radio it's just a simulation it's a mock-up and here's my text so I can uh, type in any text I want here and you can see it says sent message so it sent the message back it sent this message to say transmit that message and here you can see the S units over time and if we go over to the temperature console we can see the Raspberry Pi again it's not using any processor uh, at much and the memory has not it's not taxing the memory or the CPU of the Raspberry Pi at all. So Node Red is using very little of the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi's uh, CPU. One of the benefits of using Node Red is that the dashboard is uh, viewable via any browser. So uh, here uh, is the uh, browser on my tablet. I'm just running Chrome and uh, Here's the radio console and if I was to swipe I can go across to the temperature console and I can move up and down. I can go on and turn on 
the switches here and I can change the threshold temperatures so that all works and same thing on the radio console I can turn it on the S meter is working you know and if I go over to the temperature console again it's showing me the Raspberry Pi performance there so this is uh, working quite nicely so here's the the interface on my uh, phone uh, you can see that I can change between temperature and radio uh, the buttons I can turn on the buttons And the only thing here is that because the screen is very narrow, everything is put in, into one column. And I can just scroll up and down to it. Same thing with the radio. This is my scope, uh, which is connected to the output of the the analog devices uh, uh, DDS and right now the mock radio is set for the uh, 180 meter band so uh, you can't see the frequency counter here but it's saying it's 1.79 megahertz I haven't calibrated the AD uh, DDS there so now let me go over to the 40 meter band so there it's at the 40 meter band. You can clearly see the frequency has changed. And it's saying it's at uh, 6.99989 megahertz. And uh, I'll go to the 30 meter band. So there it is at 30 meters and it's saying it's 10.0962 megahertz. So you can see the uh, node red dashboard is actually controlling the uh, AD um, DDS and it's actually putting out a frequency which could be connected to a radio. That concludes my video. I hope this was informative and uh, thank you for watching.